mighty God, wonderful God, dependable God, reliable God, you will not come to the end of being able to describe God because anyway, all of our descriptions are nothing in respect to who God actually is. But we are limited by language, limited by our little brains. But just do understand and appreciate that God is far more than whom you can describe. And thank him continually for light, for Jesus, for everything. Thank him that he has taken you among his beloved, if indeed you are born again filled with his spirit, and walking according to his commandments. But if not, you can do it. You can change that situation right this moment. What does it take to be born again? Confess your sins unto God. That is all it takes. Sincerely, he knows your heart. And ask Jesus to take over your life, he will. From that point on, you belong to him. And he will fill you with his Holy Spirit. And all things will start to work together for your own good. For all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord, very importantly, and are they called according to his purpose. I desire that you are such a person and your life will take a direction that will be pleasant to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to read Proverbs chapter 17, verse 24. Proverbs 17, 24. Sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. Sensible people. They understand what is happening. The wise man and the one that is running after money. Two things. Nothing wrong with ambition, but ambition devoid of wisdom is a disaster. And there are too many disasters in this world. People are running after what you will get. But there are those who produce the ideas. That is not to say that every idea that is produced has come to fruition. Some have felt because the people who produced the ideas were not diligent to persecute them. One of the most fantastic things that we have in this world today is Facebook. Facebook prevalent everywhere. But there is this history that in Malaysia, some other guys had come up with something like that. Were they diligent to pursue it to the end, to an effective end? No. But this other guy came out long after they had done that thing and forgotten it and produced his own. As a brand new invention, he never heard of it, but he did it. And it's everywhere. So it's not enough only to have the knowledge. But where you are talking about wisdom is this. Wisdom will bring the idea. Wisdom. By wisdom, you will be able, you know what the scripture says? By wisdom, God filled the world by wisdom. By wisdom, a man builds his house. By wisdom, a man furnishes the house. By wisdom, a man lives in it. By wisdom, everything is achieved. Without wisdom, you achieve nothing. We'd rather run after money. We want something to happen now, 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 and we want the money to do it. The fellow who is running after money, the fellow who is running after position, the fellow who is running after everything, does not make room for wisdom. You see the wise man calculating, careful, taking the steps correctly one at a time. The unwise man wants to take a million steps in one second. Impossible, he will crash. That is not to say that lethargy is good. No, I'm not talking about lethargy here. I am not talking about the lazy person who does the things lazily. What should have been done in one day is done in six months. I am being careful. I'm not talking about that kind of trash. I am talking about the person who is diligent, who uses wisdom. And where do you get wisdom from? Wisdom comes from God. Learning gives you knowledge, does not give you wisdom. Education, wonderful, gives you all the knowledge you require about a particular field. Because anyway, you cannot have education in everything. Nobody has a degree in absolutely every area of endeavor in this life. But by wisdom, you can come up to anything, meet up with every challenge that comes your way. 
because the wisdom comes from the source of life, God himself. And God is beyond every challenge that comes to you. I am talking here about the wisdom of God. If you had wisdom, you'll be able to do that thing. But where there is no wisdom, that thing will fail. And you will tell yourself there was no money to do it. No. The wisdom to take the next step that would generate the money. At one time, I used to be engaged in some kind of thing that advised people on how to do their businesses. There is something that is known in the finance and business world. And what is that? Any business that you are starting and you are throwing money at, you are almost certainly going to fail. The most successful businesses are started without the money because it is the idea and the wisdom that is the business, not the money. If you have so much money to throw at anything, you waste it. And anyway, in financial terms, the money you take from your pocket to invest is the most expensive way to do a business. That is why it will almost certainly fail. That is neither here nor there. I'm not going to expand share on that one. You can go and do your consultancy anyway. But if you have wisdom, you will succeed. The other fellow who has no wisdom, his eyes are on everything. He wants to get this one. He wants to get the other one. He wants to be this. He wants to be that. So he's looking for every crooked way to get to whatever thing he or she calls the top. He wants to get to the top in this one. He wants to do the other. The top, yes, you can get there by the crooked way, but what do you enjoy? Nothing. You get there and discover that you had destroyed yourself. Or you get there by bribery. And the scripture says, fire shall consume the house of bribery. And people will say, ah, it doesn't matter. That's how people make it. You are not making anything. You are destroying not only your life on earth, the life of the generations that you produce, if you do produce any. And after that, you end up in hellfire. Which one is better for you? Wisdom. Scripture says something. Wisdom is the principal thing in all of your getting. Some other versions will say, sell everything you have by wisdom. And how do you get wisdom? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. What does it mean to fear God? Just to tremble before God? The devil trembles before God. That's not the kind of thing we are talking about. But the real fear of God is a person who will keep the commandments of God. The person who will not do some things that God says don't do. The person that will stop where God says stop and move where God says move. The one whose life is conducted by righteousness and holiness. The one who keeps the commandments of God and does the things that are pleasing in his sight. God gives wisdom to such a person. Fear God, keep his commandments, he will give you wisdom, and you will live a satisfied life in this world, achieving your purpose, achieving everything that you set out to do by God. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.